Welcome to the SAP HANA Academy. My name is Bob and in this series of videos we're going to be looking at some of the new features within SAP HANA SPS09. In this series of videos we're going to focus on two concepts, that of smart data quality and smart data integration. In this video we're going to be configuring an OData adapter within SAP HANA smart data integration so that we can import data from an OData provider. So we've already in covered in other videos how to install and configure the data provisioning um, agent. So if you look in the SAP HANA Enterprise Information Management series of videos for SPS09, you'll see a video on how to install and where to get the data provisioning agent from. Assuming that you've installed it, what we're going to do is connect to the following data. So if I'm, I'm going to launch Google Chrome. Now, OData is data within it, which is in a specific format. If I simply do a search for OData in the web, and I select Introducing OData, which is the Open Data Protocol, you've got a Wikipedia, a Wikipedia page which describes what it is. So I'm going to assume that you've seen and used OData before. We're going to connect to one which is the basic Northwind, Microsoft Northwind OData service. So to get that, all you need to do is in Google again, type Northwind OData Northwind. There's an OData test service, which is at services.odata.org. If I select that, then we've got a few different services. This is good for testing, just making sure that you can connect. Of course, it would be better that you connect to your own OData services in terms of authentication. This is completely open and you, can only re you can't return that much data. So I'm going to go to the read-only Northwind service. And this is the OData Northwind service, which I'm going to show you how we can connect to using smart data integration. So I'll copy this. And that's going to be the URL. So I'll just minimize, actually, um, Google Chrome. So the thing is, normally when you use adapters, you, you create them within your data provisioning agent. Again, in another video, we've covered how to install it. I've already got it installed on this machine. If I select my data provisioning agent, what I'll be prompted to do firstly is log in. So the first thing I need to do is log into my SAP HANA system. So I'll connect. I'm going to log in with my Dev01 user. And what you'll see here is that we don't have an OData adapter. So basically what this means is that it's not a system adapter. So how do we actually make a system adapter? Well, it's very, very straightforward. We need to do this within the SAP HANA Studio. So to do this, I'm going to go to my SAP HANA Studio and I'm going to launch a SQL console. And what I need to do is run a specific command. So the command is as follows. Essentially, it consists of three main parts. And I'll explain each part. So firstly, we're creating a adapter called uh, OData adapter, adapter. So how do we know it's not already created? Well, if I expand my list of tables and go into the Sys schema, there's a view called adapters. If I expand my list of adapters, and open the content, What we, if it's already installed, we'll see an OData adapter listed here. As you can see here, I have lots of different adapters, but not an OData adapter. So what we're essentially going to do is firstly create an adapter with that name. We're going to give it some properties, which is just a display name and a description. And then we specify our location DP server, which means it's going to be applied to our data provisioning server. If I execute, we create the adapter, and if I go back to this table and refresh, or this view, we can see now that we've got an OData adapter. The thing here is that it's not a system adapter. It doesn't really matter, but this is created with this SQL command. So it's not created from within the data provisioning agent, as you can see here. If I refresh, we won't see that OData adapter listed here. Again, it's the same if I was to actually shut down my data provisioning agent, we wouldn't see that adapter listed here. So if I shut down and go back into my data provisioning agent, because it's not a system adapter, we won't see it listed here. So again, I'll maximize. I'll log in with my Dev01 user. 
Again, we don't see that OData adapter here, but we know it's here because we've got it listed in our list of adapters here, as you can see. So that's the first step. The second step then is to create the actual um, remote source. So you can either do this from a SQL script or you can actually do this using the UI. So I'll show you how to do this using the UI. So we've got our DP agent. We've got, this is the service we're going to use. So I'll copy this syntax, which is services.odata.org forward slash v3 forward slash northwind forward slash northwind dot svc. So what I'll do is I'll go back to the SAP HANA Studio and I'm going to go to my remote sources within the provisioning folder. So we've got already got a remote source connecting to Hadoop. If I right click here, this is where I can build my new remote source. So firstly, we need to give the remote source a name. So I'm going to call this one North Window Data. And then we need to choose the adapter name. Of course, if I select from the drop down, we've got our OData adapter, which was that display name. And it's connecting to the DP server. Again, you should note here, it's not connecting to one of our agents. We don't really need the agent for this. This is connecting directly to our data provisioning server. So next, what I need to do is enter my connection properties. So firstly, I need to enter my URL. So I'm just going to paste the URL here. If you've got a proxy, you need to enter this information here. I do have a proxy, so I'll enter that here. Then if you've got such things as a trust store file, you need to you need to include this, which is the OData's client public certificate. I don't have one because we're using a publicly accessible um, provider from Microsoft. So I'm from services.odata.org, so I don't have a trust store. And you've also got this thing called the support format query. This is used, um, there's only really two options. You've got, it's, it would be set to true or false. So if this is set to true, dollar format equals JSON will be appended to, to your OData entities in JSON format. If it's set to false, then no format query is appended. So basically it won't append dollar format equal JSON. So the next thing is to supply your credentials. Now, there are, for me, there are actually no credentials. I, you can actually put anything here. It doesn't make a difference. There's no actual credentials for that Northwind provider. But of course, you might have these for your provider. So just bear in mind that you would need to enter the right credentials. And then lastly, all you need to do is create, create. click on Create. The remote data source gets created. You can see that it's created. And we've also made a successful connection to that remote system. So then all I need to do is actually, like any normal um, re remote data source, now I need to choose the table that I'm going to connect to or the actual the, um, the service that I want to connect to. So if I scroll down, if I expand my Northwind OData um, remote data source, these are the list of objects which you can access. Of course, this will list all the objects, all the services within your OData provider. I'm going to select my sales totals by amount table. So obviously you can't access the data here. You need to create a virtual table first, just like any normal remote data source. So I'm going to add as a virtual table that sales totals by amounts. We need to give it a name. So I'm just going to call it OData underscore, um, actually OData underscore sales totals by amounts. You need to specify the schema. And when you've done that, just like any remote data source, if I now close my um, list of windows and go to my actual Dev1 schema, we should have an additional table here called um, the OData sales totals by amounts, which is from that Northwind OData remote data source. And of course, I can right click and open the content and see the data within that service. So in this video, what we did is we looked at creating a remote data source to an OData provider using our um, OData adapters within Smart Data Integration. We created and imported a virtual table. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to build a replication task within your SAP Web IDE to replicate data from your OData provider.